Hey folks, this is John Oaks here with Hankster's Hot Rods today in our Homer City, Pennsylvania location. And I have the honor to go over this car that is sitting beside me or behind me, whichever way you're looking here right now. Um, this car behind me, uh, very, very nice car here again. Uh, uh, it's always nice whenever you get a vehicle that's in such good condition as what this one is here to be able to go over it with you folks and kind of point out to you um, all the things that it has going for it. Um, just, you know, the general condition of the car. So we'll start off just with the, uh, the basics about the car here. Uh, first and foremost, we've got obviously a 1968 Plymouth GTX here. Um, this is done in the correct Matador red. Uh, and of course, as we look at it, you can see it's got the black GTX striping on it with all the GTX badging. Um, it also has the black vinyl top on it. Um, and then basics about the drive line and the running gear. Um, we do have the 440 cubic inch Mopar engine. Um, however, it's not the numbers match uh, motor. Um, it's dated out, I believe, as a 67, but it is in fact a 440. Uh, and then it's got the 727 Torque Flight automatic transmission. It's got the Mopar eight and three quarter inch uh, rear end with the 323 gearing, and it's got the uh, the Posi or the Shore Grip um, uh, differential in there. That was Mopar's, you know, Posi. Um, and as far as running gear, power steering, and we have manual brakes. However, it is disc brakes up front, and of course drums out on the rear. So that's kind of a basic overview of the car. Um, so we'll start our walk around here. Uh, first and foremost, the paint on this car. Very nice paint on this vehicle. Um, I know uh, not too long ago here, um, this car was actually uh, ceramic coated. Um, so again, the paint's super smooth, super shiny, all the way around, just a very good looking car here. Um, the bright work, the trim work on the car, we've got all the wheel lip moldings here, all nice and straight, polished up very well, and and all attached good and secure all the way around as far as the wheels and tires obviously it's an aftermarket wheel and tire combination you've got the 15 inch Krager SS chrome steel wheels here which is a very good classy or classic looking wheel for these cars and of course the popular tire here the BF Goodrich radial TAs up front we've got 225 70 15s and then of course out on the back Back, a slightly bigger tire, a 295 50 15 back there. Um, as far as the panel fitment and alignment on this car, very, very nice uh, fitment on everything here. Well, you can look at the gaps here uh, on both the front side and the back side of the door. Very, very uniform, nice tight gaps here. Elevations as compared with the uh, uh, front fender to door and door to quarter panel. Um, everything is nice and flush here, straight down the side and all body lines all line up. Of course, down below, we've got our more bright work down here with it, which is that uh, rocker panel molding. Um, again, that is, in, is nice and straight and all securely fastened. I already mentioned the black stripes. Uh, again, that is vinyl there on the car. And then of course the GTS badging on the uh, quarter panel. We come back up to our door. Some of the bright work or the trim and so forth that we have on it is we have both the driver's side and passenger side mirrors. The chrome finish on those is in great shape and the same thing with the glass. There's no chips or cracks or anything in that glass. It all looks good. Uh, all of your bright work up around the door here uh, as far as like your uh, drip rail moldings. Um, these are in great shape. Uh, again, nice and straight. Uh, no pitting. Uh, rain gutter here is nice and smooth throughout that vinyl top same thing here nice and smooth I go all the way around and feel around it because we know here um, that this is one of the problem areas sometimes you'll feel some bumps underneath here and this is nice and straight uh, from what I can feel here now as far as the glass uh, on the door side here the passenger side or 
driver's side, I should say. Um, there's no chips or cracks anywhere in the glass, whether it be the wing window, the actual door glass, or the quarter window. And all of your bright work around the windows, even uh, ev like your vent window and your quarter window here, that is nicely polished up and looks good. There's no pitting there. Same thing with the door handle, looks good there. Let's open up our door, take a look at our interior. So we've got the all black interior in there, black upholstery, black carpeting, all of which is in great shape. There's no rips, tears anywhere, no fading in the carpet, full length center console with the automatic floor shifter. Of course, you've got the factory dash, factory instrumentation. Um, you do have an aftermarket radio and that is a uh, retro sound radio. Uh, and then down below, you do have a couple of extra gauges there. Uh, I believe you've got the uh, water temperature and the oil pressure gauges down there. That just got, kind of gives you, you know, a better view of what's going on with uh, with your motor there as far as temps and pressures. Um, you've got uh, front seat belts. Uh, they are retractable. And of course, you can see that the uh, interior lights work there too very well. Uh, door panels on the car are in excellent shape. You've got the wood grade trim on the door panels. Uh, and even your armrest pads are in good condition, not having any rips or tears or cracks in there from, you know, just normal use. Uh, uh, everything looks good here. The other thing before we close our doors up, we always look at our uh, seals and weather stripping all the way around our door openings here. Those are all intact, no rips or tears, nice and soft. Again, all attached secure. Same thing with your door weather stripping here, all in great shape, nice and soft, no rips or tears here either. So that's going to seal up very well. You even have the little rubber bump stops on the door there. So whenever it closes shut, it's good and secure. So that's pretty much it from the driver's side. We'll close this up. Again, it shuts nice and easy, and then we'll continue our walk around. So again, the big long quarter panels on these GTXs, super straight. Like I said, all the way down the side of the car looks good. If we come to the rear of the car now, we'll start up at the top here, um, checking out the glass. So again, the rear glass, Great condition here. We've got uh, no chips or cracks anywhere here on the glass and even your bright work, your trim work around the window here, all securely fastened, looks good, nice and straight all the way around. Of course, to go along with the big quarter panels on the car, we've also have an equally big trunk on these cars too. Lots of room for stuff in here. Um, as you can see, fitment on the uh, trunk lid here is in really nice shape. Gaps are pretty uniform from side to side. Elevations with your quarter panels are really good here. And the gaps on the back side of the trunk here is really nice. If we come all the way to the back of the car, now we take a look at things like our tail light. Uh, the lenses, the bezels, all the trim work on the car, and everything back here looks very, very nice. So again, our tail lights, uh, the lenses, there's no chips or cracks there. The bezels look really, really nice. All of your trim back here on the trunk lid or like your cladding back here for the Plymouth GTX, that looks excellent. A very nice look. I, I Again, I'm, I, I'm partial to the Mopar stuff, but I do like the, uh, the way that they did this trunk lid here. Um, now, as far as the rear bumper goes. The chrome is in excellent condition here. No pitting, no cracking in the chrome, no scratches. Very nice shiny chrome. And if we look down below, we can see what is the ending um, to our exhaust system. A nice oval slash cut chrome tip down there. Now we've got the keys here. We're going to open this up, uh, take a look at the trunk on the inside here, which again, that is equally as nice as everything else so far that we've been over. So of course the key works the lock. And again, your hinges and your hood spring or your trunk spring all working as they should. The underside of the trunk, same color as the rest of the car, that matador red. Of course, we've got the jack and spare tire instructions up there as well. And then if we look at the inside of the trunk, first of all, you see it does in fact have a full size spare tire in there along with the original style bumper jack in there. The floor itself is in great shape. Uh, I'm not sure, oh yeah, there you go. You get to see a good, good shot of the trunk there. All painted again with the red there. 
but again it's not flat panels it is the actual trunk floors that should be in the car all of your drain plugs are all there the trunk mat itself is in excellent condition here looks really nice here uh, and then your weather stripping and your seals all the way around the trunk all in excellent condition here all securely uh, uh, glued and attached to the car your rain gutters back here water channels those are all good and solid so again that's going to direct that water right out the back of the car and you'll never have to worry about it coming inside the trunk lid and then of course you've got the rubber bump stops up on the trunk itself here so that whenever you close it everything is good and secure uh, good flush tight fit back here so we'll close this up Again, that shuts very easy there too. Along with our cladding, of course, you've got the GTX badging there on the tail panel as well. Now we come around to the passenger side. Again, the first thing I do is look up along the side of the car, very nice and straight all the way forward from, from back to front. If we continue our way up, no sense in really going over, um, you know, all the wheels and tires and stuff. Again, we've already kind of mentioned that. You'll see in the photos of the car um, just how nice everything is because you can blow those up and see a lot better detail uh, as far as the vinyl top on this side there's no rips or tears anywhere all your seams are in good shape here same thing I feel down here for any bumps or bruises and I don't see anything or feel anything down here up along our rain gutter that is nice and smooth and again all of your trim your drip rail moldings all of the bright work around the windows and along the tops of the doors here all in very nice shape same thing with our passenger side mirror the chrome finish is in excellent shape the glass and the mirror in great shape glass in our passenger side door now and quarter same thing no chips no cracks whatsoever uh, it looks very very nice and again our door gaps to the back gaps to the front here on the passenger side very uniform as well let's go ahead and open up our door on this side and then that, that way you get to see the interior from both sides all angles uh, the factory dash uh, is you know looks very very good there um, there's no uh, no cracks or anything in the dash pad no rips or tears in your seats same thing with the carpeting as I mentioned before no fading and you can see that on this side as well uh, and of course like I said you've got the bucket seats up front you've got the bench in the back with the seat belts here up front and those are retractable uh, uh, again so again all of your seals up along the door here those are all in great condition uh, same thing again with our weather stripping on the doors and again our door panels are in great shape same thing with your armrest pad no rips tears no cracks in that uh, to speak of um, everything just looks really really nice on this car Again, that door shuts just as easy as the other side. You do have the fender mounted antenna here. And then we come around. Uh, oh, the one thing is, um, I always point this out with your Mopar cars, you're always going to have that Pentastar emblem down there on the passenger side. <clears throat> Sometimes you'll get guys that aren't you know, necessarily Mopar guys that wonder, well, why is there only one on one side and not the other? That's the way Mopar did it from the fact so that would be correct on this car now up here at the front of our car this is exactly what your GTX front end is um, everything's all pretty much stock OE up front here your grill itself is in great shape you've got the GTX badging right in the center you've got your headlights high beams low beams um, these are just seal beam unit glass lenses no chips or cracks there you've got your bright work your bezels around the headlights which are all in excellent shape here um, your bumper again that chrome just as nice as the rear bumper there's no uh, no pitting no cracks um, no scratches here very nicely polished up uh, front bumper there then of course our hood you've got the Plymouth across the front of the hood here this is your uh, factory hood here um, gaps are really nice here this is a steel hood you've got the uh, kind of the scoops here off to the side on your uh, GTX you've got the four 
40 badging inside those scoops. And then if we come up here to our windshield, again, excellent condition here. No chips or cracks. Your bright work all the way around is in excellent condition. Your wiper arms are in great shape. Again, you've got nice wiper blades on there too. Now with this car, there is one little tiny dent in the, in the center of the hood there, and that is about the only flaw um, that I can come up with on this car as I walk around it there. Um, so again, it's not very big at all, but it is there, so I like to point it out. So um, we're now at the front. We're now at the point where we're going to open our hood up. So let's go ahead and get our latch, and let's find that one. There we go. And with the hood open, um, we can see that the underside is done in the same matador red as the rest of the car. You've got the flap here on the front edge of the hood to help seal things up there. And again, you can see there's been no modification to the underside of this hood whatsoever. Yeah, hinges and springs are all in good shape and they're all holding the hood up as they should. The engine compartment itself done the same color as the car which is the way that it was done from uh, by you know uh, Plymouth back then. Uh, you did the same color engine compartment as what the rest of the car was. Um, so starting with the engine here, a um, couple of the things is uh, first and foremost, it is a 440. As I mentioned, not the original numbers match motor, uh, but nonetheless, it's a 440 and I believe a 67 a 440 at that. It does have the chrome air cleaner lid and base the air filter element itself is in good shape nice and clean um, as far as the carburetor underneath that that is a quick fuels technology carburetor four barrel carb 780 CFM carburetor there to help deliver that fuel and air to that motor um, another component to help deliver fuel and air is the Edelbrock Torker 440 aluminum intake there and then they have for, for a little bit of uh, bling I guess for underneath the hood they have a nice set of Edelbrock chrome valve covers. Um, it does in fact have the breathers there in it also so it vents properly. Uh, and then as far as the ignition system goes, upgraded ignition um, but they've done it very good. Uh, good components here. You've got an MSD uh, Pro Billet distributor. Um, you also have an MSD Blaster 2 coil. Uh, that's going to help give you a little bit better spark there. Uh, along with that we've got some upgraded plug wire or these are the Moroso Blue Max 8 millimeter plug wire. So a nice thick wire to let that uh, that flow of a, a spark there go through the uh, go to the cylinders there um, uninterrupted. Uh, as far as uh, the rest of the components, looks like we've got an aluminum uh, water pump here. We've got a chrome thermostat housing here. Um, you've also got the power steering. Uh, the belts and everything are all in good shape here a uh, nice chrome shroud to go uh, along with this too to kind of brighten things up underneath um, that's pretty much uh, as far as the bright stuff underneath here um, you do have your factory style radiator here um, with I believe it's a seven blade uh, mechanical fan in there along with all the MSD stuff too, uh, the distributor and the blaster 2 coil you do in fact have the MSD 6a box down here too um, um, so that kind of controls everything. Um as far as other components on the car, we'll go with exhaust now. So we've done the air fuel delivery, we've done the ignition, now the exhaust to help it breathe. It's got a set of two inch, um, these are long tube ceramic coated headers, um, emptying out into a full two and a half inch exhaust, uh, all the way back to a nice set of Flowmaster mufflers. And then right after the muffler, um, we, it goes into a three inch tailpipe um, with those uh, chrome oval slash cut, cut tips that we saw back there earlier. As I mentioned, um, it is a power steering car, manual brakes, disc brake up front, drums on the rear, complete with the emergency brake all hooked up. Uh, and then as far as the rest of the drive line, you've got that 727 Torque Flight transmission, automatic, and then you also have the uh, Mopar 8 and 3 quarter rear, 323 gear in there with that shore grip or posi unit in the differential. Now our GTX does in fact have the fender tag on it or 
for the trim tag up in here. Um, so again, it's got all your codes and everything. And I believe there's been a decode done for you and it's on our website within the pictures there so that you can see what all the options and so forth were for this car. Um, with that said, at this point, I usually go over uh, the fact that uh, a couple things. One is if you're not on our website, I would recommend you go there. It's hanksters.com. Uh, that way you get to see upwards of 100 photos of this car. Um, all the way around, inside, outside, underneath, uh, you're going to see those. They can be clicked on. You can blow them up. That way you get to really check out the condition of the car. Again, this car is super nice, um, so you'll want to kind of check that stuff out. Um, you're going to see our retail pricing. Um, that, in fact, includes and closed shipping to anywhere within the 48 contiguous states. It also includes our Hangster's three month, 3000 mile powertrain warranty as well. If you're interested in seeing exactly or finding out exactly how that works, if you would ever have to use it, just feel, you know, feel free to give us a call there. We'll be glad to go over that with you. Um, parts and accessories. I mean, if there's anything at all that you would wanna possibly have added to this car that you don't necessarily see here, um, same thing, hit us up by phone call, text, or email, and let us know what that is. We'll be glad to get your pricing on parts and labor to have those things installed. Um, and with that said, that's pretty much it for our walk around. Um, if you can bear with us for just a moment, we'll get everything closed up here. We'll get this back in our shop on our lift so that we can go through the underside with you and show you how nice that is as well. And at the end of that, we'll fire that motor up so you get to hear exactly what it sounds like. Hey folks, welcome back. We are now here back in our shop with our 68 GTX up on our lift. So we're gonna go through this car, the complete underside with you. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I know about the accessories and parts and so forth underneath here and uh, the condition of everything that we're looking at. So starting here at the front, of course, back behind our chrome front bumper, the first thing we're gonna come in contact with is that radiator. Now the radiator, I'm checking it to look for any leaks or drips, um, mainly along the bottom, but I'm also looking at the hose, the clamps, and anything else like the drain, pet cock, and so forth for it. And again, this radiator is nice and dry the whole way across the bottom of the radiator. Um, also, I can kind of look up and see the bottom of the fan where it's at right now and see that uh, everything all looks good there too. Back a little bit further, we can now start talking about about some of that suspension here on the car, mainly starting with that front K member. Again, this is where everything kind of bolts off of. So that K member is in great condition, looks nice and straight, doesn't look like it's ever been dinged off of anything there. Of course, we've got a 7 8 front sway bar here. Uh, that sway bar, the bushings here at the frame, as well as the sway bar end links on all ends all look to be in good shape. There's no splits or cracks in any of the bushings. So all of that looks nice and tight there for you. Now with this front suspension, it has been upgraded. Um, we've got some QA1 tubular upper and lower control arms on this car. So the tubular, um, obviously it's gonna be a little bit stronger obviously than what your OE stuff is. Um, just offers less deflection in the suspension and so forth. So again, those are a good upgrade to the front end of this car. Um, now again, with the Mopar stuff, a lot of it is gonna be like a strut rod style front suspension, and it does in fact have their strut rods. Again, everything all looks to be in good shape there. Shocks look to be in good shape. All your mounting hardware, bushings, and so forth all look good. Uh, as far as steering and braking on this car, we do have power steering on the car. Everything looks nice and dry as far as that goes. And of course, all of your um, components, your drag link, pitman arms, tie rods, tie rod ends all look very, very nice in this car. As a matter of fact, your tie rods and such all look to be fairly new on the car. They look to be in great shape. Um, and again, all those rubber dust boot covers all intact here so it makes those last a lot longer. Um, so that's the steering. As far as braking goes, we do have manual brakes. This car is disc on the front drums out on the rear of the car there too. And we'll take another look at that whenever we get back there. And that is also complete with all the emergency brake stuff all hooked up and functional. 
Now if we come in towards the center here, we can start talking about our drive line on the car. Uh, starting with that 440 Mopar engine here. Uh, we're looking at the oil pan, checking out the gaskets, seals and so forth, and everything is nice and dry on the oil pan. Even here at your drain plug and back at the rear of the pan, all dry. All of your transmission lines coming back are all dry as well. Um, speaking of transmission, we're here now. This is the 727 Torque Flight automatic transmission. As you can see, we do in fact have the cover on the front here. That's going to protect the flywheel and torque converter. Um, we also have this nice Speedmaster fin aluminum transmission pan uh, down here. That's going to help with cooling. Uh, it looks good down here and it is nice and dry. It all has all the correct hardware, the, the hex head or Allen head, I should say, uh, uh, cap screws here, all the correct washers and everything. So that all looks in good shape. Uh, transmission cross member that looks to be in excellent condition as well as the transmission mount and then final thing with the transmission is going to be the output shaft seal where your slip yoke from your drive shaft slides into there that is all nice and dry before we get too far uh, a very nice uh, you know component to this car is the exhaust system um, so we've got a nice set of ceramic coated uh, long tube headers these are two inch uh, long tube headers here they are going to exit out into a full two and a quarter inch exhaust or two and a half inch exhaust I should say um, with the crossover pipe here and then as we get back we see, we're going to see that we have a set of Flowmaster mufflers and then the tailpipes or what we would consider like the axle back version there um, that's going to actually go into a three inch uh, tailpipe with a chrome exhaust tip on there and we'll show you that as we get there too drive shaft is going to be a steel drive shaft um, it is balanced universals have all been checked over that all looks to be in good shape our frame and our floors in excellent condition here i don't see any patching no holes nothing underneath this car you can see all of your stamping lines everywhere uh, again if it has been undercoated it's been very lightly undercoated and you can see everything here so again this is in great Great shape. Uh, all your floor braces, everything, all here intact. Uh, pinch welds as well as your rockers. The pinch welds are all nice and straight on the car on both sides and the rockers are good and solid on both sides as well. Uh, I mentioned that we do have the emergency brake stuff all hooked up so you can see all your cables and everything coming all the way to the back to those rear drum brakes again all functional. Uh, and that gets us back to the rear end of the car. So this is is a Mopar eight and three quarter inch rear end here. Um, the differential cover itself is in great shape and again it is all nice and dry around there and whoever did this did a super neat job when they installed the third member assembly on here uh, of making sure everything looked nice and neat underneath this car. Uh, pinion seal nice and dry there. Uh, again as far as the rear end gear I believe it was a 323 uh, and it is the posi unit or with the Mopar stuff they call that their shore grip uh, differential um, and then like I said right after these Flowmaster mufflers you'll notice that the tailpipes step up to a three inch tailpipe all the way out the back of the car there uh, as far as the rear suspension we've got that multi-leaf rear suspension back here um, you do have a set of air shocks and again as I always mention about those they are kind of handy you can very easily adjust them give the car the right uh, rake that you're looking for and the right ride quality that you're looking for there just by simply putting an air hose to that putting air in it or taking some out uh, as I mentioned drum brakes on the rear our wheel and tire combination I think I failed to mention that on the front end but we'll catch up right now um, we've got those BF Goodrich radial TAs all four corners now up front we had 225 70 R15s uh, 
on the back we've got 295 50 R15s and again those are mounted on those Kreger SS chrome steel wheels. Um, as far as all of our brake lines and so forth no leaks or drips anywhere there those are all run nice and neat on the car. Fuel lines same thing neatly done no leaks or drips and that brings us to our fuel tank painted all black underneath here almost like a gloss black this thing looks phenomenal underneath this car here no dents or dings all your straps and hardware are all in great condition on this and from what we can see of the trunk floor out at the sides and so forth from underneath everything looks nice and solid there as well as i mentioned we've got those chrome oval slash cut exhaust tips there again just a nice end to that or finishing touch to that exhaust system and then of course we've got that rear chrome bumper there as well so that's pretty much it for underneath our gtx as i've been doing as of lately is uh reminding all you folks out there that we are in fact an atc trailer dealer as well we've got multiple models here on our lot in stock ready to be sold and used to put one of these nice classics in um, we've got uh, the enclosed car trailer slash race trailers out there um, if you care to see any of those if you're in the market for one you can go straight through our car website to see them if you'd like by simply going to the inventory tab clicking the drop down and choosing trailer inventory or by going directly there by typing in hankstershaulers.com and again you'll see the pricing you'll see pictures options descriptions um, everything on the trailers just pretty much like you do all of our cars here too so with that said we're done here we're going to go ahead and get this off the lift go underneath the hood we'll fire this 440 cubic inch mopar engine up 